here's how I meditate. I use a uh, homemade meditation stool or rack or chair or whatever you want to call it. It's uh, three pieces of wood, two pieces sort of, I don't know what you'd call that, rhombus, trapezoid, I don't know, I failed geometry in high school. <laughs> um, but uh, very easy to make <clears throat> and uh, cheap. Uh, this one needs a new paint job, a little bit old, I guess, but it serves its pur purpose admirably. Uh, it's used thus. You'll note I'm on my knees. Um, take it, this, with the sort of low bit towards your rear end. Put it over your two uh, calves like that. Sit down. It's the same thing as being in uh, the Padmasan, which is the lotus position where you have your feet on either thigh. Can't do that anymore, I'm 49. <laughs> um, the advantage of Padmasan or Padmasana or Padmasana or whatever you want to call it, lotus position, is that your spine is very easy. Your lower spine, right here in particular, is sort of automatically in the right place and you tend towards a straight back. It's kind of like the way the um, you see um, Japanese people squatting uh, whenever they're, I don't know, if there's any number of reasons for a Japanese person to squat, I guess. They could be just uh, at the table or they could just be listening to someone else speak or sitting around their house, uh, squatting around their house, sitting on their haunches, I guess. That kind of thing. The only difference is, of course, with this, you're up a little bit, your buttocks have support, and uh, you um, don't put quite as much strain on the muscles of the legs. Uh, I used to think that originally the problem was muscles cramping up, but no, this actually, for older legs, this kind of, or medium-aged legs, I guess, like mine, um, this position actually stretches the muscles in some, in some cases unbearably. So it's not that you're worried about your muscles cramping up or circulation being harmed in your legs. That doesn't seem to happen to me. But what happens is the muscles become overstretched because <clears throat> as you get older, your muscles sort of contract. Uh, but the long and the short of it is you can just sit here like this more or less comfortably without a huge amount of getting used to this. Um, it doesn't really take much to get used to sitting on one of these things, or I didn't find that it did, um, until either you're in a position where you actually can sit in the lotus position, or until you just reach a proper meditation position. Uh, I'm kind of both. I, I would like to increase the flexibility in my muscles and get back to the way I used to be when I was in my 20s, and I could easily sit in the lotus position. Can't do that anymore, but... I'm sort of experimenting with myself, sort of testing whether or not I'm beyond the point or whether I just need a lot more work than I normally would. I don't know. Work in progress. But you can do all your breathing exercises when you do that, when you sit in this position. You can... I, I have a stiff neck, so I tend to do this a lot. And I'm into the physical aspect of yoga in terms of... or meditation even. In terms of keeping the muscles stretched or maximized as much as possible. Um, and you end up doing poses that look like this simply because right now I'm stretching the this part of each forearm when I go like this. I'm not praying, but you can see where these gestures come from, why they're useful in yoga or in any other type of physical type uh, uh, philosophy or applied philosophy. Um, uh, Oftentimes, I'll do my own version of Qigong as well, but usually when I'm standing up. Occasionally, I'll do it when I'm sitting down or on this seat. I'll just sort of rotate the base of my spine, sort of around in a circle, or clockwise and then counterclockwise. I have scoliosis, so I do tend to try to manipulate the spine a lot, which is kind of a little bit beyond the idea of meditation. But when you consider the fact that Whatever problems you have with your body will impact on your ability to meditate. Um, it's a good idea, at least I think at my age, to in, uh, include some sort of physical, I won't call it a workout, but a physical um, tr 
training of the body while you're doing it because you, your, your body has to essentially be turned into something resembling an isolation tank. You can't have your body constantly distracting you with all kinds of things. Now, that's not easy to turn your body into that vehicle that allows you to just sit there and explore the inside of your own mind, <clears throat> but it can be done, and I think it can be done at any age. You just have to know what your limitations are, and you have to know what you expect out of doing all of this. I've been known to meditate for several hours in the evening right here, and when I'm done, I don't really think that I've really accomplished anything. But then I play back in my head where my mind went when I was meditating, and, I, and you realize this isn't a case of wanting to accomplish anything. This is a case of wanting to go somewhere. Um, Logic Rolls the Dice uh, did his come meditate with me, and he eventually had to deal with, I guess, aphorisms um, that were just, I wouldn't say blurted out, but sort of shot at you to allow your mind to consider all the implications of these aphorisms that I think it's Alan Watts who was uh, quoting or not quoting but uh, interjecting into his meditations. You can do that with anything. Um, I tend to, I like poetry, um, 19th century English rhyming poetry. Most people consider that, I won't say wretched stuff, but not really worth going along with. But if I go through the entire ballad of Reading Jail by Oscar Wilde in my head, which I can do actually, I've got a good memory for poetry. Um, my mind has relaxed and it's gone places that it wouldn't normally have the capacity to go. Um, and it leaves its mark when you come out, but not in the way that you think. You go, in, you go inside of yourself, your mind gets this wonderful break from the normal distractions outside of itself, and you think, I want to bring this wonderful, peaceful feeling with me outside of meditation and into the outside world, and you realize how difficult that is to do. You can't you can't just sort of say, I'm going to mix the inner and the outer right now. It, it can't really be done. At least not at the level I'm at, I suppose. <clears throat> but what I want to do, or what I find happens is, I go inside, say I sit like this, for, see right now, there, I'm almost, I think I might be able to crack my the base of my spine right by the tailbone. No, it's not going to happen this time, but I, I'll sit like this. Now get into the right balance where no muscles are tensed, but no muscles are sort of ignored, I guess you would call it. And I can sit like this for quite a while. And you withdraw into an interesting place inside of yourself that's, that again is completely different from your, what you're used to. And it's actually quite nice. You. Um, your body you feel slowing down, your thoughts will slow down. I'm um, speeding things up, this takes a while to do it. Yeah, I, I notice oftentimes it takes like an hour just to get to um, a situation in which I'm sort of coasting inside of myself. <clears throat> and once you get in there though, uh, <laughs> words fail. You can't really say this is what I did while I was in there. You can't even put your own thoughts apply them sort of to the outside world once you're done meditating. Uh, so I guess all, all that you can really do when you say this is how I meditate is to show how the physical things take place. Uh, how you set the stage, how you get your body ready, and then you sit still. The rest, I think, is not something you can even hope to um, share with somebody else in a YouTube video. You probably have to sit and talk back and forth with a human being for hours, which I've done. I've got a friend who does this as well, with, with the meditation stool that I made for him, actually. Um, if, if you have somebody you can talk to like that, back and forth, day in, day out, it's enormously helpful, especially if they understand where you're coming from, especially if they have almost the same sort of, I don't know, metaphysics as you do, or same sort of cosmology or whatever about life, the universe, and everything. I'm lucky I have that. I'm not going to attempt to, de to describe what goes on inside my own head when I meditate uh, for, that re for that reason, um, but setting the stage is very important. You gotta get, you got to get to a point where you can sit still and you can go inside yourself. That in and of itself is an enormous step towards being a successful meditator, if you ask me. What's a successful meditator? <laughs> <coughs>